This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. Sports fans, here's the sports show of sports stars. Here, home run hitter Hank Sauer, discus hitter Des Cook, and twin sports star Dick Grote of the Pirates on the Inside Track. This is Fred Hessler presenting a parade of sports personalities with the answers to leading sports questions. Today, hear Hank Sauer of the Cubs and the way to beat the Hank Sauer shift. Discus performer Des Cook of Southern Cal tells the secrets of his field event. And Dick Grote of the Pirates also appears, with Hilton Spanninger joining us at the organ for the Inside Track to Sports. In baseball, the fans really go for the powerhouse, the big man with the big bat who can hit those home runs. In Chicago, the favorite is Big Hank Sauer, who's been home run king and last year passed the 40 mark in home runs, though he didn't top the league. With Big Hank, a strong pull hitter, it's tough for him to get hits because of the defensive shift used against him, the Sauer shift. Chuck Benedict talks to Sauer about the shift and about that mighty bat he swings, heaviest in baseball. Well, as far as I know, Chuck, I think it is true. I use a 36, 38-ounce bat. Uh, well, up into the past uh, three years, that's what I've been using. And before that, I was using the 36, 40 ounce. Uh-huh. So uh, now I'm back to 36, 38, and about July or August, and I just drop it down maybe an ounce or two. That's what I was going to ask you, whether it made a difference over a season uh, in changing the weight of the bat. Well, it does, because uh, playing every day like uh, we do, and you get into this hot weather in July and August, you naturally have the strength set from you, so then you drop uh, your weight of the bat. Now, Hank, uh, of course, uh, you're one of the most deadly pull hitters in baseball. They even pull a shift on you many, many times. In fact, they do it rather consistently now, don't they, in the National League? Yes, all but a few clubs, and uh, at times they don't shift over. If there's a man on first base and it means anything, they know that I will take a shot out to right field, then they play me straight away. But uh, the only time they really pull a shift is uh, when there's a home home run in order or something like that. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, does that make any difference to you up at the plate there? Of course, as you say, occasionally you try to keep modest by slapping the right field, don't you? Yes, but uh, it doesn't make too much difference because if you're going for the long ball, you don't care where they play. If you hit the ball good, they're not playing in the, <laughs> the right spots anyway. That's right. And, of course, uh, uh, coming off of your bat, that ball is almost always uh, a rifle shot uh, when it does go into fair territory. And uh, no matter how they shift, it's tough to get those, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so if you hit the ball real good, you can still get them through the hole because I've hit many of them that... Uh, I had three of the ball players on one side, and they still got them between them. Yeah. Well, those rifle shots will sure do it. Uh, they'd have to really load that uh, infield on that left side to, to hold you down in a case like that, and they can't afford to do that, can they? Well, no, not when it's going to hurt them, uh, because if it hurts them, I'm going to take a shot over that wave if I have to hit it in the ground. I remember one time I hit a ball that never even got off the infield on the right side, and it was a base hit because there was no one over there. <laughs> sure. Well, in certain situations, uh, uh, the defense can't afford to, to shift that much. Isn't that true, Hank? No, in a close ball game, they can't afford to because it's liable to cost them a ball game because I can't hit that way when I want to, and uh, they know it, so they just uh, play me straight away and honest yeah. when it uh, means something. Uh-huh. Are you uh, more comfortable in left field, do you think? Yes, I uh, think I am much more comfortable over there for the simple reason I... Uh, have a, an easier throw over there, and my arm is not uh, quite strong enough to be a right fielder and throw from right field. As far as fly ball and fly balls and catching and running up to him, catching up to him is concerned, I can do that all right, but it's the uh, arm. You have to have a terrific good arm <coughs> over there in the right field. In other words, the equivalent throw from, from right field to third base, from left field is to first base, and you hardly ever have to make that throw, do you? Well, you don't make that throw unless you come in fast for uh, maybe one of the shoestring catches and you have a man on first base, and he may be halfway. Then you maybe a throw over there, but that's that's not too uh, that's a short too off. Anyway. Yes, it's not too off either. And that's the inside track to hitting with Hank Sauer. <laughs> It isn't necessarily true that you've got to be a football hero, but it is true that many football players also make good discus throwers. That's been the case with many, including the 1936 Olympic champ Ken Carpenter and another Southern Cal star, Des Cook. 
Chuck played football for the football Trojans and also performs ably with a discus. There's a reason for football men starring in weight events, and it's due strictly to size, as Husky Des Cook can tell you. We asked the nation's top collegiate discus man about his performance. What's the furthest you've ever thrown a football? Oh, I don't know. 70, 75, maybe. That's a pretty fair toss, man. I'll, I'll settle for that. Let's see, uh, Bukic can throw him that far, too. You're old. That's right. He's uh, got quite an mm-hmm. arm on him, all right. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you one thing about this uh, matter of throwing biscuits. Now, you see this in other events, too. Occasionally, a guy lays off for a while, picks it up for the first time in a long time, and, and, and gets off a mighty heave. Now, uh, are you better at it when you're when you're throwing regularly and working out regularly, or does a layoff sometimes do you a lot of good? It all depends on where you catch it. Your condition, uh, is you drop off, once you stop your conditioning, uh, when you first come back after a long layoff, you do feel good the first day mm-hmm. and maybe the first week. But pretty soon, once you start working on it in your form, it'll start tearing you down and you'll drop down for a ways. But then when you get back into condition, actual throwing condition, uh, it comes a lot more natural and, and you become more steady. At the first, you get good throws, but you're never very consistent. You mean right field, left field? That's right, that's right. Line. And in distance also, you'll get a real great throw and then you'll uh, muff one completely. Have you found that you were uh, ever uh, consistently, let's say, off to the right or consistently off to the left? In, uh, in yeah. good condition, I'll throw slightly off to the right, mm-hmm. right of center. But Is there uh, any reason for that? Have you figured it out, or, or it doesn't make too much difference? Well, I figure if I go straight across the circle, uh, my feet will be pointed straight out towards mm-hmm. the center, mm-hmm. and you can't throw over, a, over your, straight over your uh, hip, so you have to open up a slight bit, which would put you a little bit into right center. Mm-hmm. And that's where, golf stands. That's right, way. that's mm-hmm. right. You can't go directly over your hips. You've got to go around them mm-hmm. in order for them to do you any good. And as you're a big man, and most of the good discus men have been pretty big men, uh, would you say that it's an event that requires uh, good size, or have you seen some small men who do pretty well with it, too? Well, you'll find small men that do well with it, but I should say 200 pounds is about... Uh, probably a good weight. Uh, it's not. It's about the smallest you'll find good discus throwers. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that weight, you have enough strength to move the discus, yet you have enough. You can develop speed, and uh, it'll average out. Where, of course, uh, size and uh, uh, coordination help. The more you have, the more, the more you can throw, of course. But a small man, say, I think a small man is 200 pounds for the discus. Where do you think you get most of your uh, effort from? Uh, in other words, naturally, it's the coordination, but, I mean, is it uh, strong shoulders, strong arms? Uh, is there any one phase of no, it? No, no. Uh, the discus is an event where you use everything. It's a, uh, like most track events, in order to get the best out of it, you've got to use a, well, a better percentage of your capacity, you might say. Mm-hmm. But the discus is very uh, exemplary of, of that fact. You, uh, if you leave one part off, it will throw you off completely. I mean, it's a, it's a coordination of muscles. It's not mm-hmm. just a plain uh, gut offense, you might say. Mm-hmm. And some days you go out there and you feel it, and other days you don't. Is that the idea? Well, that's right, uh, especially when you're not in condition. But uh, condition, in effect, is just a consistency. Mm-hmm. You are able to depend on it much more when you're in condition. You know what to expect. Mm-hmm. How far do you think you're capable of throwing? Well, I... Uh, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to throw over 185. Uh-huh. Now, and then, of course, if you get to that point, then 200 is just around the Well, I think weightlifting place. is the uh, mm-hmm. secret there mm-hmm. because uh, ever, just about any successful athlete, especially weight men, are doing a lot of weightlifting, mm-hmm. controlled, of course, to the event. Yeah. It's a, it's a science. It's not just you just don't go out and lift. It's a science, and there's a lot to it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of study behind it, but it really produces results. That's the inside track to the discus with Des Cook. If you're choosing a sports career, it's normally an easy matter. You usually have one sport in which you excel, and that's the sport you like the best. But occasionally there are athletes like Dick Grote, who excel in two sports and love them both. Grote, the Duke All-American in basketball, signed a bonus contract for the baseball Pirates. Though he's a star in both sports, 
He still can't choose between the two, though sometime he'll have to make the choice, as he tells Navy Chief Al Spanger. Well, uh, as of right now, I haven't uh, exactly made a choice yet. Uh, I played with the Pirates when I finished uh, college. I went back to graduate, and at the same time, I was, I was flying to Fort Wayne to play pro ball with his mm -hmm. owner Pistons on the weekends. And then I re went into the service in February. So uh, is it your idea to continue with pro basketball, too? Well, I believe a lot of it depends on what kind of year I have with Pittsburgh this year. I like pro basketball. I'd like to play it again, but if I were to have a real good year with Pittsburgh, I might have to give it up. In other words, it's, uh, it's really pretty hard to choose between sports. Mm -hmm. Certainly is. Mm -hmm. since, uh, I like to play basketball just as well as I do baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, Janowicz had that trouble too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, I think he's playing uh, football, just football now. Uh, with the Washington Redskins. Right. Of course, a lot of fellows, uh, I, I think uh, possibly because college baseball isn't publicized as much, get more publicity in some other sport. Do you think that would have anything to do with choosing what they go into? Well, it could have a lot to do with it. Baseball in the, in the colleges isn't uh, nearly as popular as, uh, say, football or basketball. Uh, is it as gratifying? Uh, I think it is. That's my own personal opinion. A lot of people may not think so. Well, uh, you know, it seems to me that, uh, well, something possibly like track and field, you don't get the spectators, and possibly that detracts something away from, oh, let's say, basketball or football, Dick. Well, uh, that's one thing. Uh, it wasn't quite as big a sport uh, in Duke, at Duke as uh, basketball and football, but baseball was a, a big sport, a lot larger than track, and a lot larger than most of the college baseball in the, uh, the northern schools. Since uh, our season's much longer, we have the climate for baseball. Well, how many games did you play, for instance? Well, uh, well in comparison, for example, the University of Pittsburgh, which is right near my home, mm -hmm. they play, I imagine, 18 or 20 baseball games, where we play uh, 42, 44, almost double, in fact, double the number of games. And it would seem to me with, uh, with that many ball games, uh, it would be more interesting and uh, well, a lot more rivalry, too. That's right. There are four big schools there in North Carolina, North Carolina State, Wake Forest, and Duke within a radius of 25 miles, and that's quite a rivalry there. And did you travel much uh, in college baseball? Well, not, nothing like you do in basketball. Of course, the end of the season, we went to the NCAA tournament at Omaha, but uh, that's the only real big trip we made. Uh, that's a pretty big tournament, too, isn't it? Yes, sir. It certainly is. Uh, well, fellows like Wally Moon, for instance, uh, with Texas and... Uh, Oh, you could go right down the list and find a lot of big leaguers that played college ball. That's right. Uh, many that you've played against up here? Uh, quite a few. Grady Hatton, who was with Cincinnati when I was here, played mm -hmm. college ball. Jim O'Neill would play with Holy Cross the same year. He's with Pittsburgh right now. Played with Holy Cross the same year I played in the NCAA. Uh, how about before you went into the service? What sort of year did you have with Pittsburgh? Well, I... Uh, I played about 95 games, and I uh, was lucky enough to hit 284 that year. Uh, how about uh, being in good shape? Uh, is there, in other words, if you're in good shape, let's say, to play basketball, does it hold over to baseball? Well, uh, a lot of it does, yes. My weight was down from basketball, <clears throat> but uh, uh, you used an entirely different set of muscles in baseball, and you have to get your legs in shape again. But as far as the weight is concerned, my weight was, in, was very good. <laughs> That's the inside track to hitting with Hank Sauer of the Cubs, to discus throwing with Des Cook of Southern Carol, and to baseball and basketball with Dick Groh of the Pirates. Hilton Spanager was at the organ. This program was produced by Frank Seeley and Fred Hessler, who invites you now to join us again for the answers to leading sports questions with the men who know, those who make the sports headlines. For this is The Inside Track, an original production of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>